Hello everybody, Stuart here from Stubo Gaming. Today I'm going to be doing a review on Skull and Bones. I was about to say Black Flag. Um, this is actually the second time I've done this video. Uh, unfortunately the first time I'd muted my microphone and I hadn't noticed. So I am absolutely unbelievable. About 40 minutes work down the drain. But anyway, in this video I want to try and remove any direct comparisons um, to Black Flag. It's going to be extremely difficult, I understand, um, but I do want to try my best to do that. Black Flag was my favourite Assassin's Creed and the reason for that was the ship combat that um, was included, the feeling of being a pirate. So of course I was really excited for Black Flag to come out. Now I am going to do some comparisons, but what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to say X is a bad game because of Y. Because I don't think that's fair. So I want to deal with what Skull and Bones does well, what Skull and Bones does not do well. What has been removed from Skull and Bones that was in Black Flag, and I'm doing that just so um, we can see the difference, not whether one's better or worse for, for doing it. Um, of course, it will probably come across as one's better or worse for, for doing it, but it, it's not to do a this should have been Black Flag 2. And I'm going to describe and explain why I think that. So let's get into what this does well. So I think the actual ship presence, so the feel of the ship, the feel of sailing, is really good. Now, it has most of the things that you would expect. So you do have tidal waves to contend with. You have storms. Um, you have wind direction. Um, and if you're going into the wind, then your visibility is reduced and you slow down. If you're going with the wind behind you, you speed up. Um, if the wind is coming from the side and you put it into major trim, which is basically the fastest way of traveling, then your ship does lean to the side. It does it really well, I must admit. When it comes to combat, I think it does it really well as well. For the most part, there are some things that I think could be better, and I'll get into those in a minute. So, as you can see, um, when you use your spyglass, you can actually mark the enemy. The spyglass tells you who it is, what type of vessel it is, and what type of cargo they have on board for, for attacking and looting them. Now the combat itself is very similar to Black Flag, and this is one comparison I am going to draw. What I do like about this one as kind of a difference is you get to fire your guns individually, so you don't all fire at the same time, and you don't get that little arc image and what by that I mean in Black Flag when you aimed your cannons and elevated them you could see this ghostly like um, curved plane so it was I don't know how to describe it it basically showed the arc that your cannonballs were going to take so it made shooting the enemy actually a lot easier because you could raise up your viewpoint until you saw the arc of the cannonballs hit where you want it on the ship. Um, this has got rid of that. It doesn't do that anymore. All you see is, as you can see, you just see your reticle, and if it's too far away, your cannonballs will fall short. Now, I personally prefer that. I think that's a much better idea, and you don't get that see-through arc plane in your viewpoint, which I think is, as I say, really good. You have different types of weapons, so you have normal cannons, you have bombards, which fire cannonballs up in the air, um, you have torpedoes, you have oh, lots of different types of cannons, and they all do different things. One thing I think they do badly is the ship boarding that you've just seen on screen. You throw a grappling hook. If the grappling hook catches, which it doesn't seem to matter where you hit on the ship, it's just a chance that it's going to attach. I don't really like that personally. I think it should either happen every time or it should matter where you throw it on the ship. Now, if it does matter where you throw it on the ship, I've just been extremely unlucky 
um, and where I think I've hit, I haven't. But it doesn't appear to matter where you hit the ship at all. Once you actually do connect with the ship, there is a small mini game. No, it's not even a mini game. There's a small cutscene. That's the word I'm looking for. There's a small cutscene which basically pulls the ship to you. You get a little extra loot because you've boarded it, and then you just have your normal looting screen. It's a huge missed opportunity. But I think I know why they've done it. What they have tried to do with this game is because they want it to be a new IP. They've tried to make it so different to Assassin's Creed Black Flag that they have removed things that they shouldn't have. Um, now, of course, you're going to have comparisons. It is a ship game. It's a pirate game. And you are basically using the same type of ships, which you can't get away from. They're pirate ships. They're, they're ships when sails and huge buccaneers were the, the main form of travel upon the high seas. What they've done is they've removed the parkour ship jumping action. There's another reason I think they've done it. This is a multiplayer game. So Assassin's Creed Black Flag obviously was single player. This is multiplayer where you can play with up to two friends, but there can be any number of other people in the world with you. What that means is that if you were to jump onto an enemy ship and board them, there's nothing stopping another player coming and shooting the ship you've just jumped onto. Now, you would think that wouldn't necessarily be a problem because if they destroyed it, you'd just fall into the sea. That, that actually is a problem because in Skull and Bones, your character cannot go in the sea. You cannot swim. You cannot go onto a beach and then walk into the water and start swimming around a bay. There is no ocean going travel apart from on your ship. Now, there's potentially a real reason for that, other than that they just didn't want to be the same as Assassin's Creed. At the time that this was set, not many people could swim. So swimming didn't really become something until much later on. Um, and pirates in general weren't able to swim either, because if you lose your ship, what's the point in swimming? You're in the middle of the ocean, you're going to die. There weren't any ways of calling for help, and the chances of meeting a passing ship in the ocean are very, very slim. Around port it would be useful, but around port, if you fall in the water, then you're an idiot, supposedly. So swimming was not something that was learned, and people just didn't generally do it. Especially pirates, because pirates were hugely uneducated. Now, if that is the reason, then fair play to them for doing research. I very much doubt it is. I personally think it is just the fact they didn't want to have any on-foot combat at all, because that would be too close to Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Now, one thing that I do think they should have done better as well is repairing your ship. It would have been nice that if they'd have done repairing, you had to be stationary and you could see your crew running around fixing the damaged ship. As it stands, you use a repair kit, your ship health goes up and it's all done. It would have been nice to have had that sort of on-screen imagery of your ship being fixed. I should also comment on what's just happened on screen. Because this is a multiplayer game, you can actually signal other ships with a signal flare. And you can customise that signal flare. So the ship that I'm using, obviously, was a skull and crossbones. The other things that you can customise are the colour of your ship and sails, the um, ship itself, so you can pick different ones, and also the adornments to your ship so i've got a load of braziers around the place um, and those braziers are actually a cosmetic you could have a load of spikes to stop boarding and by saying stop boarding because that's what those spikes would have been for originally this is where i find there's another real missed opportunity they could have had a pvp section maybe fly a red flag flag underneath your black one and the red flag denotes that you are open to being attacked and you are able to attack others if you don't have a red flag you are immune to attacking in that way a pvp situation could arise where you did attack another player's vessel and 
destroyed it and took all of their cargo. You could loot that cargo hold. That would have been an absolutely brilliant addition. And if you then included a way of jumping onto the other ship, it would just be absolutely amazing. Now, if we have a look at the on land section, you can see that it does look very similar to something you would find in Assassin's Creed. The only difference is no one's moving. Now, in Assassin's Creed, you would see lots of people walking around. There's very few people moving apart from like moving one foot to the other. There's no one walking around or doing any shopping or anything. Again, I think that's just to differentiate the two games. Um, and I think they should have not worried about differentiating the two games. The name alone will be fine. It is a new IP. They could have made it something completely different. No parkour. They could have literally just done a completely different type of combat. And that would have made all the difference. I mean, graphically, it's not the best game out there. But it's definitely not bad by any stretch of the imagination. The voice acting is pretty good. I'm not going to say it's the best again, but it is pretty good. Um, and in general, the story seems to be relatively good as well from what I'm picking up. This guy, Skurlock, being, in essence, a kind of Blackbeard uh, character. He's the, the leader of the pirates in this area. So he's the one who, at least initially, you're going to be getting jobs from and basically trying to keep on your good side. Or you're trying to keep on his good side, I should say. All of it is pretty good. I'm not going to say it's the best. It definitely isn't. But it's definitely not as bad as it has been made out in the gaming media. And that's one of the problems. The gaming media loves a controversy. They love to be able to say, this has taken X long in development. It was supposed to be as good as X other game, and it isn't. Well, the truth, the truth of the matter is that they are doing that to sell views or sell online magazines or sell subscriptions or whatever it might be. Nothing sells better than negative reviews and negative situations. If you're very positive all the time, people aren't really interested. They want that controversy. But I'm going to tell you that this game is not as bad as everyone has made it out to be. It really isn't. It's a very enjoyable game. Now, if you have never played another pirate game, definitely get this if you're into them because this is a very good pirate experience um, there are some things that I hope they add in in the future that would make it even better but even as it is at the moment it is very good if you don't particularly want to spend the full price I fully understand I don't think it's worth its full asking price as it is currently but this is a live service game it does have a shop it does have cosmetics that it's going to be um, it's going to be selling, etc. So they obviously have an idea that this is going to be around for a while. And I hope it does do well enough to stick around for a while. Because I think if they carry on working on this, it could turn into something very special. There are things they need to improve. But as it is at the moment, it's good enough. If you've played Black Flag, and I said I wasn't going to do many comparisons, but it's very difficult not to. <clears throat> But if you have played Black Flag, Flag, as long as you don't come into this game thinking this is Black Flag 2, you should be good. I didn't, because I learnt a long time ago, don't get drawn into the hype of things. Yes, I was excited because it was going to be a pirate game and ship combat, and I was hoping the combat was going to be the same. The combat is similar enough that for me it's, it's exactly what I was after. But as long as you come into this knowing it's not Black Flag 2, then it should scratch that ship combat itch. If you're expecting on-boat combat, as in jumping across to the enemy vessel, then you will be disappointed, and this game probably isn't for you. But if you just want that out on the open seas, attacking vessels, hunting down um, giant vessels and ships, then this is going to be good enough. It honestly is. So what would I improve? Well, first of all, as I say, I would allow people to jump on board opposition ships and to attack the people and loot them. Even if you just 
you haven't got a fleet like you have in Black Flag, but even if you just add them to your crew, so you can lose crew members and you can replenish crew members, that would be absolutely brilliant. Um, if you could actually jump off your ship into the sea, that would be brilliant as well. Um, I think they could make you slow enough swimming that there'd be no no point in jumping into the water to swim anywhere of, of significance. I think adding a PvP for those who want to play it, now don't get me wrong, I, I wouldn't, but I think there are people out there who would love that aspect of the game. Even if there's a PvP area, you could make an area out of the normal game route where you could go there and it's literally just pirates attacking each other and looting each other's cargo. That would be absolutely brilliant and I think that would make this a much bigger option for, for other players. There are mini games for harvesting materials on shore, but basically you, you pull your ship up alongside them and then you have a gauge on the screen with a yellow band and a green band and you have to press your R2 button or your right trigger button when whatever it is enters that green band. Um, that could have been done much, much better. It could have been that you jumped off your ship and you actually did that by hand, but the, the difficulty could have been that you have the chance of being attacked by animals or uh, privateers or pirates or whatever it might be. As it's a multiplayer game, you could then strategize with your other people to say, right, I'm going to go and do this. Can one of you cover me? And just make it into a communal event. I think that would, again, really improve it. That being said, do I think this game is good enough to be a standalone game? The answer is yes. I think it's got all of the key points for a game. It's definitely not quadruple A like they tried to make out. As it stands, I would say it was a double A game. It wouldn't take long to get to a triple A game. And I think if they add in things like boarding of other ships as a bare minimum, I think that would put it into the triple A. If you're interested in a pirate game and you've not played Black Flag, then definitely get this. If you have played Black Flag, then this is still worth it, in my opinion, if it's on sale. Anyway, guys, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, click the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video very soon. You all take care. Bye for now.